Hey guys, it's Terry, and this is a special edition of the show. Um, basically, I, I'm doing this video because I was trying to cap tomorrow's slate, and I could just not concentrate on doing the capping because I had to uh, talk about everything uh, that is going on with the Wild. Um, obviously, uh, during the show today, uh, it was announced, uh, Nick announced it in the chat that um, Kirill Kaprizov will be returning to the lineup uh, for tomorrow night's game against the Blues. Now, during the game against Pittsburgh, uh, Joel Eriksson Ek uh, unfortunately was injured. He's week to week uh, with a lower body injury. Uh, Oscar Sundquist was are also injured. He's day to day uh, with an injury as well. And after um, giving it some thought, I decided. Um, that I would put together my lines uh, for what I think the Wild should do going forward. Um, now, a couple things here. Uh, with the old Eric Sinek injury, uh, it was reported by Russo that uh, Dean Evison um, hinted that we might be seeing Marco Rossi making his return to the NHL. Marco Rossi had a rough start early on in the season uh, when he came in the lineup. Uh, he wasn't really put in a specific spot. He kind of started on the fourth and third lines. Um, didn't even get really any time with Kaprizov except uh, um, in the in the brief uh, power play time, I think, once, and um, obviously during preseason. But with the addition of Kaprizov returning, with the addition of um, Gustav Nyquist making his debut, with the potential... Uh, addition of Marco Rossi making his return to the lineup, that affects all three of the Wild's top line uh, lines. So Kaprizov obviously returns and plays with Hartman and Zuccarello. Uh, Hartman, um, especially um, really since he returned from injury, um, has really looked like the Hartman that we saw from last year. Zuccarello misses Kaprizov. He doesn't look like himself. I think with Kaprizov returning, it gets Zuccarello going. The chemistry with Hartman is there. That top line is set. With Joel Eriksson going down to injury, you're not breaking up Boldy and Johansson. There's so much chemistry there between those two This uh, since uh, trading for Johansson. And when you look at the other centers that are available for the Wild, there is nobody that fits in. Um, well, you don't put Goudreau there. Connor Dewar, I really like him as a player. I really, he's very important to this lineup, but he's not the right player. What you do is you bring up Marco Rossi, who had a rough start in the NHL, went down to the AHL. He's been killing it for Iowa all year long. He has chemistry with Boldy already. You plug him in in that second line with Boldy and Johansson. And when the top Defenders are focusing on the Caprice offline. That second line, which is speedy and will have a ton of offensive talent, will be able to score goals and really help the Wild out offensively. Going to the third line, you've got Goudreau, you've got Felino. Obviously, Oscar Sunquist is day to day, so he'll be making his return some way into this lineup. Um, I don't see them scratching Felino. Honestly, if I if I was Dean Evison, Sunquist would probably be on the bench as of right now, unless there are any injuries. I get it; he's got playoff experience and such, but um, in the end, that'll be up to Dean Evison. But Felino, Goudreau, and Gustav Nyquist making his wild debut. Nyquist adds a sniper and offensive threat to that third line, which would which will help uh, them be better offensively. The fourth line, Duhame, Dewar, and Reeves play great together, especially Dewar and Reeves. Duhame, fast, speedy guy. He can score too. Uh, Dewar and Reeves have shown offensive uh, flashes through this season as well, even on the fourth line. You don't mess with that fourth line. So you go with those four lines, all which have the ability to put the puck in the net. Looking at the Wilds' defense, Middleton and Spurgeon, you don't break them up. They've been good all year long. Brodeen and Dumba, again, 
very uh, huge chemistry, best friends, uh, those two. Uh, you keep them together. That third pairing between Klingberg and Brock Faber, who is the fourth player, uh, he is uh, that the Wild could add here. He is uh, playing uh, in college right now, uh, and his season should be done shortly, and he will be available for the Wild to sign. He would likely uh, make his debut on the third line, I would assume, with Klingberg. Uh, that's a lot of offense uh, for your third D pair. Uh, and what that allows the Wild to do is those two can jump up into the play against bottom lines and bottom D pairs of other teams. Uh, and could potentially, if you get Johansson, Rossi, Boldy, Klingberg, and Faber on the same line, oof. That is a ton of offense. So yes. Uh, then going to the goaltenders here, Gustafson and Flurry. I think it's pretty obvious that Gustafson should get the game one start. Um, I think Flurry should definitely get in there in the net as well uh, if Gustafson uh, struggles at all. But um, I think it should be Gustafson's net. But overall, the reason why I'm doing this video, a lot of wild fans. And I get it. Yul Eriksson-Eck is a huge part of this team week to week. Hopefully would be making his return sometime in the first round, uh, if, if if possible. Maybe the start of the second round. But if, you, if this is what we get, if we get this lineup that I posted here on Twitter, those four lines, those three D pairs, and Gustafson and Annette, I don't care if the Wild face the Colorado Avalanche. I think they'll beat them. I think this is a ton of talent and offensive threat. I think this lineup can beat the Colorado Avalanche. I think this lineup can beat anybody. And uh, I'm very excited for the playoffs. So excited I had to make this video because I literally could not concentrate just thinking about a possible lineup like this. So that's basically the video. Um, of course... Nothing is official yet, except that Kaprizov will be making his return uh, tomorrow night. Um, Rossi, Gustav Nyquist will be making his debut soon. Uh, but Rossi and Faber are the two young talent, two young prospects. that are not officially going to be on the team. But uh, with, things, with how things are going, I could see them both in here and really making big difference, both uh, a big uh, difference uh, to the lineup, both of them. But that's the video. And um, yeah, just wanted to say the Wild are going to go on a run. Uh, I think they get at least to the second round, if not the conference finals. Give me that lineup and uh, let's go wild. Have a good one, guys.